Holy shit, China won? There's no way, bro. Welcome back, guys. We're back at it again with another draft analysis for Worlds 2023. This time, we're covering the Chinese Civil War, the LPL semifinals, what have you, between Weibo and Billy Billy. It's going to be very interesting how this meta evolved. And honestly, the fact that they drafted four ADCs in one game just goes to show how weird and wacky this meta can be. And, you know, it's very... The way it's evolving is super funny. So by the time we get to the finals, we actually... There's not really a good idea of, like, what can possibly be picked. So let's get right into it. Starting with game one. This is where we first see the the stage for the draft kind of get established, right? It's the the starting point for everything. So people are a little bit scared. There's a little bit of nerves. They're, you know, you don't want to show too many of your cards to begin. So... I would say out of all the drafts in this meta or in this series, it's probably the least interesting because it's going to, it's going to form a baseline for what teams are prioritizing and also sets the stage for with the issues in the previous game and then what to adapt for the next one. So main things to note here are the Nico B1, which is not too interesting, honestly, but also the Vi opener. The Vi opener is not because, because when you look at the Vi opener, it's not that good in isolation. But the point of it is likely to hedge against specific AD carries. Or they have a prediction that uh, BLG are predicting that they're going to pick certain AD carries that are blindable in like B2, B3 slot. Which is the Aphelios in this case. And Weibo in particular has been using this a lot. So it's very possible that they just pre-picked this because they knew they would potentially get a, like, let's say counter pick, like it would be decently useful. So they went for it. The only, the other thing to note in the bans is that um, BLG got rid of both Callista and Caitlyn. So moving on to the rest of the draft, it's not that interesting, I would say. It's just pretty solid counter picks. The only things I would flag are <clears throat> the Milio blind on five, and the fact that the punish for it is not that incredible. Because... We can... Actually, let's backtrack. The Belveth on 4, it's good on paper for the matchup. Um, for Weibo. But I had a mild concern with it being able to do much. But in this case, since Weibo is playing backwards, there's not that many issues with the fact that Belveth cannot reach because they're, they are playing backwards. They're allowing BLG to go into them. And Weibo have built a comp around that pretty much, right? That which brings up the issue with the R5. Because BLG's comp, or at least their impression of BLG's comp and the way they win is based around the fact that they just have to delete Aphelios or Milio because they lose front to back, they feel very obligated to go forwards here, right? Because of this, they had to pick a, they had to pick a support on 5 that had some level of engage, which is the only thing that would enable the Milio B5. Normally that's not allowed because you can either pick a champion that has true engage or you pick something that out, like, outranges it and um, or stat checks it another way. But because they've or BLG have already front loaded all their picks, this is a rare scenario in which the Milio B5 is actually allowed. So the only the main thing to change here would pr probably see what you're what you're blinding instead of things like Desire because it kind of stunts your ability to flex an AD carry. And as we obviously see, it evolve significantly over the rest of the draft. So I, in, in the grand scheme of things, I do think, especially when one of the two lovers duo is banned, I think they're going to like most likely drop it unless it's Rakan that's available and then they can pick it with certain support, uh, certain AD carries. So I think because of this, you feel kind of stunted in your draft and you can't really do too much. So that's why it's probably allowed, and that's why this, this draft is like somewhat favored for Weibo, even though it's a little bit awkward. Because they actually have decent pressure on top and mid, and they're actually able to neutralize bot. And the fact that despite of their true engage here, they have decent ability to play out the early phases in order to stop this and help them transition normally. And Aphelios is probably one of the best front-to-back AD carries for this. Game 2 is where the evolution begins. Right? I call this version 1 of the AD carry evolution. This time, let's look here. We get right into things. Oriana ban. 
I believe Weibo switches sides. Yes. So BLG actually selects blue side and the draft changes a little bit because Weibo ban out Nico because they think it's good. They ban out Orianna because they don't want to deal with it B1. And this is probably one of the strongest B1s in the game, if not the strongest B1. And they ban out J4. Right? BLG, they get, rid they get rid of some of the cringe stuff. Clearly, they couldn't deal with the Belveth. Rumble is a, is a constant issue because of... Um, <laughs> It's, a build, it's just like really good as well. It's like becoming stronger and stronger. And the Renata ban. This leads into the B1 Jax. Because with Rumble gone, Jax is now, let's say, the strongest blind remaining. Which is like, it's a little bit unorthodox at first. But it makes sense if you're trying to give a lot of pressure for Bin. And if they feel like they, they need to have him win in isolation. And now we get the first Caitlyn game. Because it, it slipped through, if you recall, last time. I mean, it was banned last time. Both Caitlyn and Callista are available this time, and this is where we get the a bit of a funny. So we see Caitlyn, R1, R2, along with Maokai. A lot of teams will pair it with Lux immediately, but Weibo feel like they need to prioritize Maokai as well, so it's okay to stagger it for R for R3. It just means that you're kind of revealing three picks with the um revealing three picks all at once because even though you show only R1, R2, there's only so many champions that you can pick with Caitlyn, so. If you don't pick it here, you're going to lose it in your phase two bands. So you, they, BLG technically already have an idea of what's being picked. And this is where the Varus Ash comes out. The idea behind this is that the main thing with Caitlyn lanes is that it has a couple of weaknesses or more like one main weakness in that it is poke. Champions that can match its range and give it pressure where Caitlyn does not really have a range advantage anymore. And where situations where she cannot use her range really consistently. The reason for this, Varus, making Varus Ash really effective, is because Kate, this forces Caitlyn to not only have to play around her range, or it dilutes her range advantage, because these two champions both have 600 range, and they have long range poke tools, So and they have long range CC ultimates that make it actually very hard for Kaylin to even walk up to auto and do her normal thing post 6. Even with the Lux that's pretty much premeditated for R3, it's very hard for this lane to function sometimes. So this is actually very good on BLG to be able to pick this. Honestly, an interesting adaptation, this could be a cook, but an interesting adaptation could be the Morgana here because of the CC, right? The, the anti-CC because of the... Um, it prevents Caitlyn from needing cleanse, but obviously it's a weaker champion, so it's hard to say. So phase two, the draft all basically completely gravitates around bottom lane. So this is potentially why they picked Jax because it wins every it wins quote unquote every matchup remaining, and it can probably function in isolation because this this entire game is going to be about bottom lane. At this point, the only concern that BLG has is making an impenetrable fortress Caitlyn comp. This is why the Jace, bans, Jace and Cassante bans are warranted because these are champions that would give this comp a lot of trouble if they cannot, if they, if Weibo just plays for full siege, it's really hard to play. And if they have too much um, defensive capability, it's also hard to play. So their goal here is to really cause as much chaos as possible in the bottom lane. So they, this is supplemented by the Silas, which is both decent into the Azir matchup and also <laughs> can create timers to run to bot and cause problems for Kate Lux, which is good. Vi, same thing. It's a really good pick here because of the um, ability to reach Caitlyn no matter what. So in this draft, even though you technically have pressure in a decent amount of your lanes in the early, it's very hard. It's a very, very thin wire for able to succeed compared to the last time. So that's why I would rate this for BLG. And this is because... I would say, I've been raving about this for a while, of the Ash pick, mainly. Varus is good into the matchup as well, but more and more, I think people are, need to catch on that this Ash gives so many lanes a lot of different problems. It, it counters Caitlyn, it counters Kalista, it just, there's no, it, it destroys Zaya Kaisa as well. Like, there's no real counter to this champion, except for, like, hard engage stuff. But if you pick hard engage stuff in this meta, I actually don't think it's going to work. So I, I think this is going to continue to go up in priority as we see it. Whether it's AD carry or support, probably more in support because of the Umbral Glaive stuff. Version 3, or version 2 rather, in game 3, look at this! Ash B1! What is happening? Weibo, they choose blue again. They ban out Jax because 
they 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 catch on to what BLG is doing because they do rumble ban. Okay, no problem. We match now. See, so now it's harder for BLG to not worry about top. They're 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 giving it more options for themselves. Recon ban is pretty much standard at this point because the picking both of the lovers duo is still an issue. Ash B one. This is what I'm talking about. They pick Vi. I don't care. We 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 can pick defensive and neutralize it. They counters. They self counter pick Kalista into Ash. It's they B1 and then Weibo are ahead in this draft. That's the crazy part, right? So now Weibo can just pick whatever they want in order to kind of neutralize this Vi Kalista. Like it's already pretty well known that it's going to be decently aggressive. So now they, they match it with Varus again. Giga Prio on bottom side. Then BLG match with Caitlyn. We're in a similar spot, except BLG is now where Weibo was last game, right? Remember what I just said about this being hard for Weibo? This is the same thing, it, except it's just Kalista instead of Caitlyn, or uh, instead of Lux. So now, all of a sudden, B1 Ash. Wow, guys, we win the game. They can't pick anything. So this is probably one of the best evolutions of this. <laughs> because now, they don't even need to care that much. Like, Weibo just wins bot, like hard, right? And now they can just pick a really standard comp. They actually flex Poppy to top into the Aatrox, which is interesting because they put the Shy weak side, which is proper because this draft is all about bottom lane, right? They should know that. So the Poppy flex on 2-3 while potentially countering Caitlyn Callista or um, Vi Callista, super smart, honestly. And look at this. Look how Thanos Poppy is into this entire team composition. Full forward into Poppy and you're all dashes. And you don't have pressure in the early game because you have a winning bot side and a graves to take your entire jungle. Like it doesn't really matter. Like Kaylin, this is a case where Kaylin actually doesn't have priority. It doesn't matter which one of these two is the actual AD carry. So it's like really hard for them to play. This is why the meta evolved into four AD carries, by the way. Because this amount of pressure is crucial for a lot of teams to kind of just win the game. Pretty disgusting. Wait. Oh, it was actually Grace top, my bad. But it's the same, the same thing stands. Which is really weird, by the way, Grace top, but it must have been a tech matchup, but it's just the same point stands. <laughs> right? But you still have Poppy into this entire comp. It's arguably more effective because it cuts more dashes and stuff. And it just changes the playstyle of the jungle pathing. <laughs> also, one side note is why not just pick a normal support? into double AD carry. They should lose, right? The only issue with that is that they have so much damage with quad hail of blades or double hail of blades per side is that even if you pick something like Nautilus or Leona, right now it's not going to be enough damage. You, you can't secure kills that easily. So they these double AD carries are a little bit stronger, at least in the early phases. Game four, this is where uh this is where it gets a little bit interesting. I'll touch on it real quick. Weibo end up winning this one. They switch sides again. And this time, they actually sack the Orianna B1 in order to get Vi. This is very risky, or in order to get a Vi ban. This is very risky because Orianna B1 is just objectively good no matter what. And it's a very strong pick, and there's not many mid laners right now that can deal with it, right? Like, you can pick Azir or Syndra, but like, it's like, eh, in terms of whether you're actually happy with that or not. So they, they signed up for it. We see how it plays out. They open Ash once more. It's... It's a little bit harder to pick Ash here because of the Orianna as well, keep in mind. Because she's it can space pretty well. So I would say it's a small blunder, but it's a very niche interaction. This is where we see the Quinn as well, <laughs> coming out from the Shy, which is very funny. So this time we see Ash to carry with Heimer and Aphelios Bart. <laughs> and this dynamic changes because now, Weibo will just directly have pressure, and BLG are like, yeah, that's fine. We're just going to leave. And Aphelios is going to stay on his, in his lonesome, and then we're going to try to cause chaos elsewhere. And that's pretty much what happens in this draft. And because of this, and because of the awkwardness of the Quinn, it's probably just an execution issue and being able to, being able to really follow up on a Quinn comp. Because these are some of the hardest comps to really make use of. You can get decent pressure in lane, but Quinn often gets outscaled and you're just focused on roaming and causing so much stuff. But like when you're facing against someone like Jax, who's like such a strong pusher, you really need to have a lot of understanding of what your timers are. So it and and 
you know, what risks you're taking for, you know, leaving Jax alone and to push and to move around at the right time. It's really cool and interesting, but um, very, very hard to execute. So if, if I were to rate why they lost, it's because of a comp like this that's so hard to pilot, right? This is the Shy's first death. Like, he didn't seem that useful because the champion is just very... It's a, it's effectively like a, um, a split push neutralized champion that can roam very often, right? And this makes it very hard. But kudos to them. Game 5. Boom. Final evolution. They ban Silas. So all the ADCs are still up. And we see the Jax Rumble bans matching. And they ban Orianna. Right, so we we get a Maokai standard opener. Every the whole field is open, and they give Bin Jace. So this is the first interesting portion of it. Weibo go for Callista on two, uh, Callista Renata on two three, which is actually good because because of this slot specifically. Keep in mind, BLG R one R two, Jace Sejuani. Right, because they know. BLG only has one slot left in first phase. This is technically safe to pick Callista now. Safer, let's say, let's say safer, not fully. Safer. The reason for this is because they only have one slot left, and they have to choose between blind, like a blind something on three in shield, or they can only take one of the two AD carries that would suppress this lane. If you pick like, if you picked like an Ash lane with something else, then it would be pretty bad for Weibo here. I'm not going to lie. So if they opened with, I'm not sure why they opened Jay so early. Maybe they just put pressure on it. But if they did like Sejuani Ash as an example, just keeping this theme, it would be very hard for Weibo to actually pick much because they would have dealing with the Ash is very difficult, right? They can't picking Caitlyn lanes is going to be hard. You can't pick Alyssa that well. You're not going to have pressure. So that's what I mean by like picks like this are so strong and then they, they lose their opportunity by picking these two picks r1 r2 and the ash is just gone now because that is the main champion that would cuck this this composition right here you could pick ash and if they blind um you could pick ash and they can't even do this anymore and they there's not many ids you can pick anymore you would probably have to pick like a Phelios and then go cleanse so now we go the draft continues they lose their opportunity the Shy can neutralize the top lane once again, and they play for bottom side. But honestly, it's not bad because of Kate Lux. But I think if these two lanes are together in isolation, I, it seems that teams are able to pilot the Callista Renata a little bit better and have more pressure that way because of the because of the ability to just all in and and, and go that way. <laughs> these are two relatively safe comps, all things considered. And although this is actually a really cohesive comp by BLG. This is this one kind of stat checks it. It just that just tends to happen with these Orn compositions, right? It's very interesting that the shy is just perma weak side. He's definitely not the player he, we we've known him for anymore. But this is this is a good comp by by all means. And they can force engages, and they don't have to worry about Jace um Jace siege that much because although they have some defensive tools, Weibo can get in. So it's definitely it's such a cool evolution of the draft in terms of like being able to think on your feet what dealing with different things and different dynamics of like lanes and just different game states overall and i think i just wanted to showcase this so hopefully this was an interesting spotlight on like what went on in this draft and why it was so crazy and um i hope you got a kick out of it so thanks guys for watching and i will catch you in the next one so yeah